you have been waiting so long and now it's finally here. The last episode on the build of the Tamiya Mini Cooper Diorama. Hi there you scale model kid lovers and welcome in my super tiny shed. If you're new here please subscribe and stay until the end of this vid cause there will be a nice cinematic surprise. Today I am going to build the diorama for the Mini Cooper, yes, finally. A good diorama starts with a plan and a design and I got some inspiration on Google Street View, a randomly picked place in Birmingham in the UK. For the execution of the build I got largely inspired by the great armor modeler Nightshift. He has an awesome YouTube channel which you people should follow too. And a lot you will see here are techniques landed from his videos. So Uncle Nightshift, dear Martin, this video is dedicated to you. Hobby, hobby. I wanted to make a small field, a pavement and road and a brick wall separating them. After a rough design, a precise one with exact measurements followed, so I would get a feel for the position of each part. Mm -mm. No visible engine. As a base material I use polyurethane or PU. That's an insulation material that can be bought at DIY shops but also in well equipped hobby shops. This material is cut best on a thermal cutter, like this Proxon Thermocut. I cut the edges smooth with more precision. For the lovers of squeaky sounds, how about this? With a Stedtler marker I marked the place on the wall and test fitted my rusty rotten miniature car. The dark grey foam board is also PU and this piece will be made into a brick wall. Then a lot of it was a matter of outlining the position of the wall and later on the pavement and street. Then I started cutting it with a hobby knife. This is something that can be done with the thermocut. There are portable thermocutters, but you need to be very sure of where and how deep you make the cut. Staying a second longer in a position with a thermal cutter means it will melt the foam. And that stinks! Presentation of your diorama is everything and I want the sides of the diode to be as smooth and slick as possible. That's why I stuck on 0.25mm evergreen sheet with Uhu glue. The diode base test mounted on the oak wood base which Mark made for me. Thanks Mark. Did you know weight is an important parameter in valuing a model? A wooden base makes the perception of your piece much more convincing in my book. Now the terrain work had to be done and Mark gave me a great tip. Knauf Reno Band. This is a very lightweight filler made of ready to use plaster of Paris. This was put on with a spatula, a spoon, uh, well I tried, and a wet brush. Fine and coarse sand were sprinkled on the wet plaster and even footsteps were pressed in using an ancient Fujimi figurine. The mini was pushed into the wet plaster to make sure there was a precise fit. Tire tracks were ridden into the wet plaster because the mini didn't fall from heaven you know. At the other side of the wall there will be a piece of pavement and road. I designed a sewer well in Blender 3D just like the one I spotted on Google Street View and printed it in resin. I cut and pulled out the PU and squeezed in the well. Time to make some asphalt and for that I've used this Vallejo black lava which is basically thick acrylic paint with fine sand. But it is very easy to work up and gives a great base for later stages. Cause you know tarmac is never black. PU is such a nice material to carve in. Look how easy it is to make these curbs. Believe me, with a little battering and some paint they will look really convincing. In the meantime I cut the later to become brick wall to size. I masked off the wall and the curb to prevent having paste on it. And like I said, this paste is really a joy to work with. One of the features of the diorama will be a road sign. 
Yes, I also got this from that particular scene in Birmingham. I designed the sign in Blender 3D and damaged it digitally. 2mm aluminium tubes from Albion Alloys will be used as the poles for the road sign. You can row cut them with a hobby knife, although the blade is wasted after that and I need guidance by using a piece of tape. I made the sign holders of evergreen plastic. I test fitted them on the poles and the poles on the road sign and the road sign on the dio. Test fitting is everything you know. It's time to make the brick wall and here I learned big time from Uncle Night Shift. As I said earlier, PU is very easy to manipulate. There are different qualities though and you best choose the most dense PU you can find as this gives the best results. My dentist gave me tools which came in handy for making those head joints. I made a joint widener from a thick piece of polystyrene which I sharpened at the end. Another handy tool is this lump of crushed aluminum foil. This is ideal for making the brick look battered and bruised. This wall isn't the newest so more damaging is credible. From pieces of polystyrene I made this brick presser to give the wall more unevenness and variation. Robbie, Robbie. There's a gap between the polystyrene finish on the side and the PU. Pay attention here. Always test your fillers on spare pieces of PU before application cause look what the Tamiya basic type filler did here. It completely melts the PU because of its solvents. I went with Knauf Reno Band to fill the gaps. Another great tip from Night Shift is this stuff, grass sea balls. This looks realistic as small twigs at the bottom of your dio. Use water thinned wood glue, paint it on the harder dio crust and sprinkle the tiny twigs where you want them. To be really sure they are fixed you can apply VMS ballast freeze. This is a very soluble transparent glue that comes in a fine applicator bottle. I added some potting soil from my garden and fixed this too. Some experimenting with making tufts was done. These are pre-made tufts by adding some wood glue on baking paper and sticking the grass fibers in them. The baking paper releases the tufts with ease. Eventually I would make the tufts in a different manner, straight on the dio. Now it's time for some grass application. This nameless Chinese unit was grabbed off eBay. It is battery powered and generates quite a bit of volts to make the grass static in order to make it land upright when sprinkling. Using long grass, this bag contains 12 mm long grass fibers, will not work when you have the applicator work on just a battery. You need an applicator that feeds the power from your socket for that. Small fibers work though. You fill the container with fibers and make sure you ground the applicator by using the cable with the crocodile clip. I stuck a piece of aluminum tube in its mouth. After that, tap the loose fibers off the diorama. They can be reused again. Important! Always make sure you remove the current on the mesh when you're done by hitting it with the grounding pole. Do not touch it. I know from experience it hurts quite a bit. This is my new method of making grass tufts. Just grab a pair of fibers, cut them even, blob on some wood glue on it and then stick them on. And boy did I plant some grass tufts! With a leaf punch from AK Interactive I punched a whole lot of miniature leaves using real leaves. I fixed them on the base with VMS Ballast Freeze eyedropper. This is a self-made technique, making grass spikes from brush hairs, which are actually pig hairs. <laughs> Vallejo Massilia Plastica is used to make the heads on the spikes. Just lay down a small weld seam, so to speak, onto the top of the hair. Wood glue is the to-go-to sticky stuff to fix the hairs on the dio. It's a time-consuming job, but when you have a few of them standing it looks convincing to me. Here I make a different spike by using sawdust. I like those. Some years ago I designed and photo etched these dandelion leaves myself. Not all of them are perfect but some of them are and I was ready to give them a try. Thin brass is easy to bend. It makes the leaves more natural. Look how shiny this one is. I stole this plant from the garden of my mother. Mom, don't do that! 
It is asparagus, a really fine leaf which is a cogent add to your diorama. Dry the leaves first. The needles fall off easily. I fixed them using ballast freeze and dabbed off the excess glue. These twigs with leaves from Joefix are very convincing. I believe they are some sort of seagrass, but they make an excellent miniature representation of a plant or weed. Vegetation is done my friends, at least for the planting part. Bobby, Bobby. On with the wall. The tiles to go on top of the wall were 3D printed and test fitted. The joint should stay thin. I gave it a base coat in Tamiya NATO black. That's right, no primer was used. During the spray job I thought it to be necessary to rag the tiles a bit more. These Vallejo paints were used for brick painting. Yes my dear followers, they were painted brick by brick. The joints between the tiles were filled with the same stuff I did the grass spikes with. Flatten them a bit with a wet brush and then make it a bit rougher using fine sand. After a few hours of drying time they were painted and after that a subtle pin wash was applied. Again a technique learned from night shift people, how to fill up the joints. This is plain plaster of Paris powder mixed with a bit of fine sand. Rub this dry mixture in the joints and then use VMS ballast freeze to fix it. Worth mentioning, I left too much of the powder on the bricks. When applying the ballast freeze it first looked alright, until it started drying. It turned up all white and I had to repaint most of the wall again. For weathering of the wall I used these two units from Vallejo. Most walls have algaes on them and dark streaks of leaking water that leaves a residue. I test fitted the wall on the base in order to get this big green algae spot in the right position. You'll see why in a mo. I like lichen, that sounds funny, on old walls and painted them in varying colors. And aren't these pads of moss made by Miniature super nice? It adds so much realism. I wanted a Hedera plant on my wall and this laser cut paper set by Emmo is not cheap but very cool. Together with some real root branches I had the wall turned out like this. I hope you like it. <coughs> on with the base as this is another one of Night Shift's tricks. I told you he was brilliant right? It is a quite shocking stage, spray painting all of the base and its vegetation black. Say what? Why? It looks like scorch earth tactics but this is the perfect way to set up and control the colors yourself as the standard colors of the vegetations out of the factory can be a bit disappointing. The black coat leaves dark shadows under the vegetation. After that it was time to dial in the colors. Tamiya buff for the lower parts as most of the grass that has died and dried locates there. Then NATO brown was used for the ground. The base of the vegetation colors is NATO green. As I proceeded I added more and more Tamiya green yellow to make the green lighter at each pass. I try to aim higher at each pass to end with the lightest color on the top of the vegetation. At that time I added more and more Tamiya yellow to accomplish that. I've experienced that you need quite a bit of yellow to bring the plants alive. With Tamiya buff the leaves are spray painted, although I would repaint them by hand to give them more color and variation. Detail work was done by painting the twigs on the ground, but super detailing was carried out by painting the veins of the leaves. I hand painted the tarmac in a lighter grey to give myself more control because I wanted to leave the gaps between the stones darker. The curbs were painted too and the big secret here is to add a little beige in your grey for extra realism. Vallejo Dark Ross was destined to go on the super well and its lid got a dry brush with a lighter rust tone. After some drying it was pressed in the well with a satisfying click. MIG oil brushes were used to create some extra weathering like dust. Tamiya washes make the highlighted stone stand out more. 
The wall was permanently fixed with wood glue to the base and with that the groundwork was done. Hobby, Hobby! I hand painted the back of the road sign because the poles were already glued on and should stay black. I like road signs on a diorama, just for their graphic interest, but they also make a dio more credible. At the back I added a self-made label, the ID road signs generally have. On the front I stuck on a sticker of the second team from Birmingham, just for fun. A lot of road signs are littered with graffiti and tags and I designed one for mine. The characters of proper tags are often connected, sprayed on in a very short time because it is illegal you know. Hand painting the tag on the sign is not the easiest, especially the positioning of it. As a nice detail I made small paint drippers. With the sponge I made those weathered black dots on the signs and streaked them using Abteilung odorless thinner. Do you remember that I encountered a robin in my garden while scale modeling? In my first vlog about the mini I said it could feature in the diorama and well, it will. First I printed a picture of a robin to scale to use as a measurement guide. I started using dust clay and modeled straight on the paper. But this clay is too coarse for this work in my perception so I went for Fimo clay. This is a fine clay that can be bought in different colors and I chose a light one to have a nice base for painting later on. I made a skeleton of thin copper wires from head to tail and put clay around that. The wings were first made on a piece of baking paper and then put on the bird with a hobby knife. Water and a brush are needed to close the seam lines. The eyes are small stones from mica decorations. The bird's beak was made of a rolled piece of clay but it proved to be prone to breaking. And now the bird is in the oven, roasting. <laughs> yes, Fimo clay needs to be baked off to harden. My Tamiya 0.3mm drill came in handy to make the holes for the legs. I test fitted the bird on the chair because that will be its destination. Making the toes was the fiddliest job I have done for this entire diorama. After a coat of Tamiya white primer I painted my tiny robin with different Vallejo colors. I even managed to give the eyes a glimmer with a small white dot. Birdie is ready! The mandolions had to be finished. I make the heads of yellow felt and punch it with a hollow pipe. One mandolion. They were glued on the copper stems with flexible CA glue. Well dear scale model kid lovers, the moment of marriage has arrived. Well I'm a bit scared for this stage, but all turned out fine. I put something relatively heavy on the roof to give enough pressure for the glue to set. Inveterate whiskey drinkers know this bottle by shape. I printed it in transparent resin and glued this gem in one of the mini's tracks. Besides curbs there is always litter to find too. It gives me great satisfaction when all parts come together after months of work. The main roll figure was fixed on the chair and the chair on a prominent spot on the base. A nice ship should also have a proper flag, so I designed this label. I detail freaked on some leaves and put them on notable spots. And then, finally, the dio was glued on its oak wood pedestal. That's it! <laughs> yeah! This project cost me more than 300 hours and it can be yours because it is for sale, depending on when you watch this of course. And please remember, don't be sobby, build a car model kit and watch Hobby Robbie. Hobby Robbie. Watch this channel, watch this channel.